my next question. All right. Say, after talking with the individual, he doesn't feel like that he's violated the Sunshine Law, and you do. Does that represent a conflict in which he would have to obtain his personal attorney then? No. Um, I represent Knox County, the governmental body Knox County. As a commissioner, you are part of that governmental body. You would only be sued in this lawsuit in your official capacity, and so it would not present a conflict. How do you go forward with you think he has and he thinks he has it? I tell the person who is about to be deposed to tell the truth and uh, tell what it is that occurred with them, uh, whatever discussion they may or may not have had, and to answer the questions. And we deal with uh, the facts that are... Do you not feel the most comfortable by meeting with people one-on-one -on -one to see if they have violated the Sunshine Act? Maybe they don't know that. They do. I don't think I would feel comfortable um, hearing that anyone violated the Sunshine Act. Um, if uh, what we have here is is an offer, we have an offer from the you one on one to answer that part of your question, certainly. Um, Or to, um, I could. They do make reference to that in their letter. Mr. Law Director, just, I'll get to you, Commissioner Pinks, in just a second. If we were to, let's say, go along with this offer, how do you think it would affect the uh, Monsieur? lawsuit well it um, in all likelihood would resolve the meetings act questions because that's what that's the purpose of a redo um, he has other other causes of action in his lawsuit which um, I mean they are against the 12 uh, new off office holders to be removed from office um, I don't know why that is necessary because if there is an Open Meetings Act violation um, of sufficient magnitude to void the entirety of the appointment process of January 31, then those persons would not be holding office anyway. Um, I think for the most part his lawsuit would go away. Okay. Wouldn't go away immediately. It takes some work. Um, if any of you ever, have ever dealt with Stramon Sear, you uh, know that he doesn't go away um, quietly. And um, but we we will continue with our defense, and certainly um, all 12, if you were still in the lawsuit, would continue with your defense whether it be uh, before a local chancellor or on appeal. Mr. Pinkston. I'm not on this committee, but I'd like to say something. John said there that this would not be an admission of guilt if we reach this settlement. But I feel like that if we go along with what the settlement wants to do, we're admitting guilt to the public out there. I believe that's the way they would proceed it. I'm with Mr. Hammond over here. I don't think me, I know, has done anything to break the Sunshine Law. Now, the Sentinel is repeatedly put in there, and they've told everybody what we said up here, so I don't feel like we broke the Sunshine Law in these recesses, even because they're reporting everything that everybody said. But they have named, they have not named any commissioners, but they have said that several commissioners have admitted these meetings. Why don't they name them? Why are they not out there? They've, they've talked about every one of us like we're dogs, like we're the biggest crooks in Knoxville, which we may be. I don't know that. But uh, why don't they not name these people? Why do they not show us some evidence like Mr. Hammond says that we broke the law? Why should we settle on something that we think we're innocent of? Now, would they not have to come forward with you, John, in this lawsuit and tell you who these commissioners were that are meeting these meetings? As I've said, um, we will certainly conduct our own discovery, well, which would include um, 
asking for depositions of their reporters. Their reporters have certain privileges that, um, as as reporters for the press, um, we would um, probably litigate those. Well, if anybody did break the Sunshine Law, these commissioners, whichever ones they were, two or three, would that not just affect their votes, the way they voted? They may have not even voted for or against these people, or we could still throw their vote out and these people still may be in office. Why should we, as a commission, be held responsible for what we did in good faith? I'm for fighting the lawsuit, and Lord knows I hate to waste any taxpayer's money expected, expected this time, but personally I feel like if they're, they're calling everybody here a crook, and they're trying to control what we did by intimidating us up here and mourning their way. Now, that's the way I feel about the newspaper and the news media. And they've attacked our families. They've attacked every one of us, I feel like. And uh, I feel like it, Mr. Jordan over here, he's been unjustly attacked. I didn't know what he had did, and I don't believe any other commissioner here did, but he done it when he was a juvenile. Well... They keep throwing this in, this drug. I'm sorry, Mr. Jordan, about you selling drugs when you were a juvenile. Now, we appointed him. We didn't know it. But even if we did appoint him for that, knowing that, what's the difference in them recommendation on a person that was an adult that was sentenced to the penitentiary for selling drugs? That's the same uh, thing in the vote, too. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe... Maybe and just maybe that this thing may be a little bit racially motivated where Mr. Jordan comes in. I don't know. I'm not saying that, but it, it, it really stinks to me that they would support a gentleman twice that was sentenced to the penitentiary for selling drugs when he was an adult and then crucify a juvenile. And uh, I guess I'm, uh, like I say, I'm not on this committee, but I'm for fighting it, and uh, that's just the way I feel. Mr. Law, Mr. Law Director, if the courts or whoever, say, found a violation, let's say, by two commissioners on one particular vote, would it simply just null their votes or would it null the whole appointment? In my opinion, I believe it would only affect the appointment of the whoever, whoever it was that they were. That, that one appointment. So even if, even if they were someone was unanimously appointed and there was only two of them that, that violated the Sunshine Law, it would still null we would the argue, remainder of the votes. Uh, we would argue the equities of that and basically that it would be inequitable for a court to find that someone who had um, received unanimous support by the commission that certainly two votes would not have made a difference. We would argue that. How successfully? I will have to see what the chancellor says if, if it comes to that. Okay. Mr. Ballard, did you have any? In Chancery Court, is it uh, the plaintiffs go first and they've got to prove every element of the claim? That is still the law. There is a bill that has been pending since last year in the state legislature to shift the burden of proof to officials. Um, that are in office. Basically, if there is an allegation that the burden of proof would shift to you to prove that you did not violate the act. Um, as it stands now, the new Sentinel, uh, their attorney, and, and then in the other case, they have to show, they have to prove by preponderance of the evidence that um, there was a violation. But you'd still have to generally all the depositions would have to be taken before you can move for a motion for summary judgment. Or a directed verdict? Can you get a directed verdict in? A directed verdict, uh, that's when you're at trial. But for motions for summary judgment, um, there is, there's some discussion about motions being filed. Motions may be filed um, soon. without depositions being taken. I mean, there, there are certainly mechanisms in place where persons can uh, sign and, and you can file affidavit support of your position. Um, and there's arguments to be made that that should end the discovery, but um, it'll be up to a chancellor to decide whether discovery ends there or if everyone, if you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound, 
and you are um, 